Welcome to day 16, ladies and gentlemen, of our wisdom challenge. I am so excited because this has been a very interesting journey. And I don't know if you guys who are watching this and are watching my other videos are seeing how like a lot of this stuff that I read in the Bible filters into my thoughts about everything. So anyway, we're continuing in Proverbs today. If you guys don't know what this is all about, then you're gonna need to check out the first couple of videos in this series. But basically every single day of January, we are reading one chapter of the book of Proverbs in the Bible because it's the book of wisdom and we know that the wise seek wisdom over knowledge. So that's what we're doing. I'm not gonna take too long getting into everything. We're gonna get straight into it. Obviously, Holy Spirit, we'd like to invite you into this time of reading the scriptures. Will you give us the wisdom behind the knowledge of the Lord? If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're feeling the vibe and you want to join the tribe. And we're going to push on in the power of the Lord Jesus. Let's go. So the first verse here, and we're reading in the Passion Translation. Uh, there's loads of translations of the Bible, by the way, guys. That's why I tell you guys this, so that you can go and reference and then change it into a different one or, you know, do what you need to do. Anyway, go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's the Lord who ultimately directs your steps. We are all in love with our own opinions, convinced they are correct, but the Lord is in the midst of us, testing and probing our every motive. Ooh. Before you do anything, put your trust your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. The Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. Even the wicked are included in his plans. <laughs> he sets them aside for the day of disaster. Interesting thing here. So I've said to you guys before, and I'll say it again, that I truly believe that wisdom, the wisest thing that we can all do is just to listen to the Lord. Trust in God, follow God's plan, follow God's God's um, <clears throat> guidance, because um, ultimately he's the one who knows everything. He's the one who knows what's going to happen. He's the one who knows why, why he built you the way he built you for a reason. He's the one who knows who's a snake in your life, uh, who's hiding as a trusted, a trusted friend, a trusted spouse he knows what we don't know right and so that's why we trust in him just like you trust in a good father um and just know this is another thing i think that christians kind of get wrong here is um there's this tendency as christians to try and like over spirit not over spiritualize but over religiousize i'm making up words now over religiousize the lord and what i mean by that is as soon as people think about Christian, they literally envision a, sp a specific type of person. But the truth is, God made us all differently with different purposes, with different skills, with different accents, with different everything for a reason. And so a lot of us trusting in him is actually trusting that he built us for what he intended us for. So trying to like mold ourselves into something else kind of goes against the, pur the his purpose for us. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is because at the beginning it says... Go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's the Lord who ultimately directs your steps. I believe that, well, to me, one way that, that the Lord has shown me that in my own life is that it's not for me to overthink every single little thing that I'm doing. It's for me to trust in him, trust in his guidance, and proactively go believing that he is ultimately directing my steps and knowing he will direct them. Does that make sense? As opposed to trying to like, oh my gosh, I'm going to try and behave like this so that people can think that I'm like extra super righteous and I'm like, this is how you got to be a Christian. Like a lot of Christian people, I'm not going to lie, I'm so, I'm so sorry to say it like this, but I have to, have to, because I know this, I, I'm trying to break, I'm trying to break through, like I'm trying to help some people out there in the world have a breakthrough, whether it's those people who are skeptical about God or whether it's people who, who believe they know God but are, don't really have a physical relationship with him that's actually tangible, you know, we talked about this yesterday um at the end of yesterday's video um so I'm, that's why i'm really addressing a lot of these things that i've noticed these observations i made about christians i've said to you guys this before that i myself as it happens actually um grew up in church okay my father was a pastor okay i grew up as a pastor's kid and the reason i mention that is to say that i have been to many 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 churches i have met many church leaders pastors priests deacons you name it and so all along in those years, I was observing a lot. I'm a very observant person. And so I don't, I do get where a lot of people come from because I've seen a lot. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Let's continue. So where are we? Um, we are in the love. We are all in love. Oh yeah. We're all in love with our own opinions. Convinced they are correct. This is so true. I was thinking about some of the comments that some people have left on some of my recent videos. 
and some people are like <laughs> oh gosh it's funny anyway we'll come we'll, we'll come to that anyway uh um where are where was i guys somebody tell me <laughs> i'm doing that thing that youtubers do where they ask you something and then you clearly can't answer do you guys find that annoying when people do that um aha verse five yahweh god detests all the proud of heart for pride attracts his punishment and you can count on that Ooh! a lot of that happening right now um and you can count on that you can avoid evil through surrendered worship and the fear of God for the power of his faithful love removes sin's guilt and grip over you. So just to talk about worship, because worship is actually a lifestyle, guys. It's not like standing on a Sunday with your hands raised singing like songs that seem that are singing love songs to God, right? Worship is actually a lifestyle. And there's a part in the Bible. Oh, can I find it? There's a part in the Bible where it talks about this. I'm pretty sure it was Paul who was explaining that. Um, we worship by living our lives as living sacrifices by as you are going about your day you worship by um by how you live by your lifestyle and this is why i've been said to you guys that um that so much of being wise or being foolish is not so much about um you gaining knowledge right that's the biggest trick people think they feel wise when they've gained a bunch of knowledge even though that knowledge means nothing what they actually need is wisdom and wisdom can partners with a lifestyle. And we've been talking a lot about the lifestyle of wisdom and the lifestyle of foolishness, right? You guys know what I'm going to say if you've been watching this. The lifestyle of a, a wise person is a lifestyle of humility, right? That it literally said that in the last verse of verse 15 yesterday, it was like, if you want to experience the Shekinah glory, the, the, the physical, the, what is it called? Manifestation, the physical manifestation of God, um, on earth then you have to be in a place of humility you know so there's humility teachability was the other one that we've been saying what was the what was the fourth one i can't remember but it's a lifestyle guys it's a lifestyle thing in the same way that if you're a foolish person your lifestyle is one of pride it's one of stubbornness you know and so we're cl clearly seeing this distinction here and so yeah just to clarify to anybody out there who might be wondering uh, worship is a lifestyle it's a lifestyle not a not a um something that we stand and do on a Sunday and, and try and look, look righteous. It's all the decisions that you're making throughout the week. I can't find the verse guys. So we'll leave it. Okay. So verse seven, when the Lord is pleased with the decisions you've made, he activates grace to turn enemies into, he activates grace to turn enemies into friends. It is better to have little with a heart that loves justice than be rich and not have God on your side. Oof. Within your heart, you can make plans for your future, but the Lord chooses the steps you take to get there. Wow. A king speaks the revelation of truth, so he must be extraordinarily careful in the decrees that he makes. Guys, we're going to be talking a lot today um, on YouTube about the pressures of leadership as men and women, but particularly as men, because we've been talking about this whole Andrew Tate business, okay? And I've got two more Andrew, at least two more Andrew Tate videos coming out today. And I'm going to talk about why there's a reason why God is so specific about in, in the Bible, he's so specific about the things he says you are to be as a man of leadership, as a king, as a husband, as a father, as a uh, leader in the church. You know, whatever it is, a leader in the world, he has so, so many specifics. And I'm going to talk in some of these other videos coming out today about why that is. OK, but yes. Uh, verse 11, the Lord expects you to be fair in every business deal, for he is the one who sets the standards for righteousness. Kings and leaders despise wrongdoing. For the true authority to rule and reign is built on a foundation of righteousness. Kings and leaders love to hear godly counsel and they love those who tell them the truth. Now, listen, guys, I want you to understand something about when the Bible talks like this. The reason why it's telling you what kings do is God is saying a true king. He's talking about true kingship. Today, nowadays, guys, in the society we live in, especially in modern society, we have a lot of people with a lot of titles, right? And their titles are just there because they happen to be born into that family. I always talk about the royal family in the UK like this, for example, because back in the days, if you look historically, when people had kings, they were like the ones who would be at the absolute front of the battles, going in amongst their soldiers, were so powerful. The communities knew them. They were like, they weren't accessible as far as like, you couldn't just go and chill out, chill with the king. But like, you know, they were part of the community. The community itself loved them and had seen either themselves or their ancestors as, as had, had had direct reasons why they were so in allegiance to these um, to these kings and queens, if that makes sense. And I believe that's more what God is talking about here. 
what we have today is a lot of people who just have positions because they were born into certain families who don't necessarily actually represent what it means to be a king what it means to be a queen in what is intended so this is god is telling us that that this is what it, this is these are the traits of true kings you could argue and queens but kings in this sense right uh the anger verse 14 the anger of a king releases the messenger of death but a wise person will know how to pacify his wrath life-giving light streams from the presence of the king and his favor is showered upon those who please him everyone wants gold but wisdom's worth is far greater silver is sought after but a heart of understanding yields a greater return again we're seeing god doing this kind of comparison of the real riches versus the riches we think on earth because the reality is guys and this is the other thing, right? This is the other thing. If you think about this, you, I, so many people have said this, but I'm going to say it and we're going to we're going to just stew on it for a second, right? When you die, right? Obviously, you've heard the phrase when you die, you're not going to take the stuff with you that you have on earth and all that stuff. You've heard that, right? But let's let's take that a step deeper, right? We're going to take that a step deeper. When you die, right? What you represented is what you leave behind as well. Does that make sense? And that is the true value, if you ask me. So the fact that there are people in the world who have been known, there's people, okay, for example, I'm off straight off the top of my head, I'm thinking of like the likes of people like Alexander the Great and, you know, like, and all these types of people. I'm not saying that I'm in favour of what they did or, or against it. I'm just saying these people that are known for hundreds and hundreds of years afterwards because of the impact that they left on the world, that is of serious value. Do you know what I'm saying? Or even those people who set up, and, it, and the Bible often talks a lot about how good parents, I know some people ain't gonna like to hear this right now, good parents will set up wealth for generations after they die, generations. So like I said, we as human beings, we have a tendency to think very much in the short term as in as far as our life, I believe a lot of that's because most people don't wanna think about death because they don't have to deal with what comes with accepting what could be on the other side of death and then yada yada yada. But also, I just think we're short-sighted as human beings. We think about the now. We think about the now pleasures, right? We think more that, oh, I want to have a Lamborghini. I want to get this Gucci bag. More than we think, I want to make sure that my great-great-great-grandchildren are looked after. I want to make sure that when I die, I want to die with the peace that my great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren are sorted. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, yeah, just to say on the note of that, uh, verse 17, repenting from evil, and also I want to say just quickly about wisdom as well, sorry, <laughs> I did say we would stew on it, the other thing I wanted to say about wisdom versus riches as well is this, right, first of all, wisdom always leads to riches, but like I said, the riches part is like the bonus, it's like, this is just the bonus of, of, of it all, right, it's not the focus, the other thing about wisdom is wisdom is actually eternal, and it is actually exponential, okay, because now, how, why would I say those two things? Well, because wisdom comes from God and God is eternal and, God is, and God's wisdom is exponential. Uh, like, as in like, it's just never ending, especially as far as us as humans and how many humans there are and the way that this world is created and the way this world develops and changes and everything. Wisdom is exponential. So that when you're investing in wisdom, you're actually investing in something that is going to, all those things are going to be the product. Everything else you want, everything you want in life is the product of wisdom. Does that make sense? everything else you want in life so you may as well seek wisdom over everything because you're going to gain all that other stuff as well right how many different topics have we gone through so far guys just in this one book of wisdom in the bible we've talked about relationships and we've talked about you know the types of people you get into a relationship with we've talked about money management we've talked about working and being lazy we've talked about anger issues and dealing with having you know even again we talk about all of these things if you can you see how if you seek wisdom all in the the result of all of that is you're going to thrive in every single area of your life and that's exactly why we're doing this challenge by the way guys uh verse 17 repenting from evil places repenting from evil places you on the highway of holiness ah repenting from evil places you on the highway of holiness protect purity and you protect your life your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure the higher you lift yourself up in pride, the harder you fall in disgrace. This is the verse, guys, that you would have heard. Pride comes before a fall. But then we're reading this in a different uh, translation. This is the Passion Translation. I'm going to read it in the translation that you guys probably have heard more. So let me just find this quickly in my actual... Where is it? Proverbs 16, 16, 18. Proverbs 16, 18. 
sorry guys i try not to take so long with this because i already spend so long talking so i'm like please don't here we go yes verse uh proverbs 16 verse 18 pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall it is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to devoid the spoil with the proud now i like the way that it's written in this in the passion translation which i'll read again for you guys your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure wow because how many times do you see that this is exactly what i've been saying over and over again guys i say that so many times i always use the example of like shows where you've got like heroes and villains right and i always say that isn't it funny how the villains will sorry guys about the lighting it's the classic middle of the day the sun's moving around i'm right near the west so when usually when i'm filming the sun is doing this like this going over there to the west okay anyway so <laughs> anyway <laughs> What was I even saying? Oh, yeah, I was saying, you know, like in movies and stuff, right? You have the heroes versus the villains, right? And they always have this scene where the villain starts telling the hero, like they've been they've been scrapping for a while, right? People have taught people's, you know, costumes are torn a little bit. They're bleeding. They've got a couple of bruises. People are breathing really heavily, but they're about to load up for like the final the final attack type of thing. Right. And then what always happens is the the villain in the in the story right will start spouting out boastfully everything that they're about to do every single thing that they're about to do because they now think right because they always love to do this to keep the suspense right so they always just before the final battle and the hero wins there's always that bit where it seems like the villain might win and then in that moment where the villain thinks that the villain is gonna win is when they start doing these boastful things of like ha 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 like i've got you now like in their head they've resolved there's no way i'm gonna be done and in that moment they fulfill this exact script scripture which says your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure because then the hero comes in of course and destroys them usually because of things that they were actually saying now i'm going to give you guys another example of this right the tortoise and the hare story right the tortoise and the hare which is a popular like what do you call it i don't know fable i think it's called i don't know these weirds these words i just find so odd but anyway so that's a whole story right you guys have heard the tortoise and the hare right the tortoise and the hare decide to race um, the tortoise signs up to race like I'm gonna I'm gonna okay I'm gonna tell you guys this story how I envision it in my mind okay because this is gonna make it this is gonna make it more interesting so this is how I envision it right tortoise and a hare right are there and somebody dares like the tortoise to a race like do you want to race you, you should race the fox you, like, the, the fox the hare and then everyone's like laughing at the, at the tortoise like ha 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 can you are you really gonna do this you know like heckling you know mocking like what are you thinking whatever the fox is the why do I keep calling it a fox? Is that like a prophecy? Is that the Lord? No, <laughs> I'm joking, guys. Um, the hare keeps uh is kind of like looking at this tortoise, like, do you know how fast I can run? Do you know? Do you know that I'm basically a descendant of Usain Bolt? Did you know that? Type of thing. And then they go for the race. Now, obviously, the hare gets khaki, right? And is like, I'm gonna go and just chill and have a nap on this tree. The tortoise is just going at the tortoise's pace, like. Yep, I'm just doing me, probably singing a little tune to themselves. Now the the hare oversleeps and the tortoise comes walking on by slowly. And the tortoise wins. You guys have heard this story. Why am I mentioning this right now? Once again, guys, this is why pride always comes before destruction. Pride becomes your pride, your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure. God is not out here. We are the ones who invite our destruction, guys. This is what I'm, I'm realizing more and more as we are reading through the, this, these proverbs, right? We are the ones who cause our own destruction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so that's what we're seeing here. That's what happens. And um, that's why when a lot of things are happening, I'm not surprised. Like when I see people getting really caught, and it's always in that moment, guys, have you realized as well? That the, and I, this is where let's let's flip back to something that was said earlier because I I thought about this but I didn't have a way to really talk about it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, where is it? It said something about God probing and testing us. I want to mention that because that here we go. So back all the way back up to verse two. We are all in love with our own opinions, convinced they are correct, but the Lord is in the midst of us, testing and probing our every motive. Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. 
he is warning us because when he's saying he's testing and probing us sometimes guys we're in a situation where god will allow us to think all the kingdom of darkness this is what the scary thing is a lot of times god will allow this, the kingdom of darkness to do this to like test you right where you'll be put in a situation where you have the opportunity to to, to see if you're to test your pride right to test if you think you can get away with something and that is god actually giving you an opportunity to confirm your humility so a lot of Sometimes, guys, in life, we get to these, and I, these, the, there's these types of situations that happen. And somebody, I wish I could think, Holy Spirit, if you want to give me an example right now, I'd be so grateful, right? There are these times in life where you are given a, you are probed, right? You are tested, as in to say something might happen. You might get an opportunity to get away with doing something, right? And you don't know what's on the other side of it. I'll give you guys a made-up example. Maybe this is the Holy Spirit. But anyways, so imagine you are working for, let's say you're working for a trucking company, right? And in this trucking company, you have to sign off because I'm kind of spinning this off of a story that I actually heard, but I'm changing the story a little bit. So let's say that you work for this trucking company. And what you basically have to do is you go, you pick up all the you're like the middleman of the sales of the sales thing. You pick up the product, you take it somewhere else and um, kind of the transaction you signing on either side side to say that, yes, this is what was brought. Yes, this is what was brought is what confirms the transaction and then the money is sent variously however it goes between all the parties involved you're just the delivery driver okay now let's say that you as a delivery driver realize that you um the payment that you're going to get is going to be way more than what you should get for what the amount of stuff that's there now the other people who are paying it probably haven't noticed maybe they didn't notice for whatever reason and the people uh, the people getting it don't know how don't know how much this transaction is going to be so you can kind of get away, get away with, um, you can get away with delivering this stuff with it actually not being the right amount. So let's say, for example, because you know, like in a lot of these huge industrial things, like people don't necessarily have the time to check. Oh, do we have exactly 400 of this? Sometimes people just, oh, we trust so and so they've been doing it for 10 years. So we're just going to let them do it. We trust that if they say that's how many crates they brought, that's how many crates they bought. Right. I'm saying these these situations that don't really happen often don't have to happen, but they just happen one day. And you're now faced with the opportunity to lie or to not lie, basically, is what I'm saying here. You're faced with the opportunity to either say, yes, I want to, um, um, yes, I'm going to just sign off this money. I'm probably going to get more. I'm going to get more money out of this anyway. These guys don't know what's happening. They probably didn't realize they didn't fill this up. Probably they probably won't realize because everybody trusts me. So I'm just going to sign off and do this. Right. I know this is like kind of a terrible example, but you guys get the gist of where I'm going with this. Right. What could be happening in this scenario? This could be one of God's testing and probing moments because what could what what you might not know is that first of all you sign and then this is the one time they do check on the other side that everything is in there because they're having some kind of an inspection and then you get caught up for fraudulence and then you go to prison, right? So there's that that's the kingdom of darkness type of trap to try and set for you, right? And purposely make sure the kingdom of darkness, guys, is very sly. You'll be surprised how sometimes, you know how you have thoughts in your brain? That's literally, like, literally the kingdoms are throwing thoughts into our brain. So somebody might have literally just got distracted by their phone ringing and forget to put in the last crate and then just closed it. And the reason why that happened is because the kingdom of darkness was trying to set you up, okay? This is how serious this stuff is. Anyway, let's see another scenario of what could have been the, po the point of you not taking that opportunity. So let's say... You get to the other point, you realize that, okay, I don't have all the stuff I'm supposed to have. I'm going to, let me go and talk to the people and tell them we'll recalculate so that I, they only pay the amount they're supposed to pay. Little did you know that in the background, both companies have been so busy, um, so trusting of you that they were actually testing you. This was all a test on their part to just test your integrity because actually they wanted to invite you to become a shareholder of the joint company that they're going to be coming doing together because they're going to be expanding and now you're not only going to be just working as a truck driver but you're now potentially going to become a business owner and have shares in a huge expanding company and they're prepared to actually let you go and start your branch in whichever state that you want to live in and that was the blessing that God had for you and this is how these things happen guys there'll be moments in life there'll be opportunities where it's, it's like, and this is why I said there's only two sides to it. The kingdom of heaven will give you, will, will be testing you so that if you pass, if you can pass this test, boom, your blessing is on the other side of it, right? And then, and if you fail this test, right, boom, the kingdom of darkness is going to find a way to bring destruction into your life. And that's actually what happens, guys. 
Um, so yeah, I really went round the, the houses with that. So that's why it's important. Um, why did I even mention this? Oh yes, because I was talking about thinking you can get away with it. Right. I was saying that sometimes there's situations where yes, you can get away with it, maybe in the short term or maybe in the moment, but you don't know what the purpose is in the long run. And sometimes your boast in the moment of saying, oh yeah, I'm going to get away with this. These guys trust me is the prophecy of your future failure. Does that make sense? Anyway, woo, we really went around with that one. Uh, verse 19, it's better to be meek and lowly and live among the poor than to live high and mighty among the rich and famous. One skilled in business discovers prosperity, but the one who trusts in God is blessed beyond belief. Wow, I like that. One skilled in business discovers prosperity, like you will prosper. But the one who trusts in God is blessed beyond belief. I love that. The one with a wise heart is called discerning. And speaking sweetly to others makes your teaching even more convincing. Wisdom is a deep well of understanding opened up within you as a fountain of life for others. But it's senseless to try to instruct a fool. <gasps> and we're going back to this whole concept of just the stubbornness of fools, right? Winsome words pour from a heart of wisdom, adding value to all you teach. Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful life-giving words, for they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirits. Before every person, there is a path that seems like the right one to take, but it leads straight to hell. Oh my gosh. This is so true, guys. This is one of those things. Listen, all I'll just quickly say, because I've made so many examples in this video, is Holly Weird Contracts. Guys, I have a whole playlist on contracts because and you guys should go and check it out because i break down contracts and a lot of types of contracts in the entertainment industry and otherwise and how people get tricked into things that seem amazing right these labels will find young ignorant naive extremely talented people pull them in get them to sign these contracts promising you're going to get a quarter million bonus for your first album we're going to give you a we're going to give you an apartment a penthouse apartment in la in hollywood we're going to give you all of this but little do you know that you're selling your soul in this contract and you didn't see it that's what they do and that's why we need the lord because sometimes god will really like guys i'll tell you something there have been times in my life where i like i and i love this about god and i always say to him if, if something isn't for me, please block it. Block it in the name of Jesus. Block it completely. If I'm not supposed to do something, make me feel so sick about doing it that I can't do it. Do you know what I mean? Because I need that. We need that as people. So if, if I were you guys, I would ask the Lord for that because it's happened to me. And I've also ignored it and I've seen like literally near, near death experiences. So it's not a joke. Uh, verse 26, life motivation comes from the deep longings of the heart and the passion to see them fulfilled urges you onward. A wicked scoundrel, <laughs> a wicked scoundrel wants to dig up dirt on others only to spread slander and shred their reputation. A twisted person spreads rumours, a whispering gossip ruins good friendships. A vicious criminal can be persuasive, enticing others to join him as partners in crime, but he leads them down a despicable path. Ooh, okay, but we're going to come back to the vicious criminal. Let's go back to the first, the other two first. Okay, a wicked scoundrel, I like that, that this is the, the terminologies of the Lord here. A wicked scoundrel wants to dig up dirt on others only to spread slander and shred their reputation. A twisted person spreads rumours, a whispering gossip ruins good friendships. Guys, this is so true. And I know this obviously because I'm a lady and there's a lot of gossiping that goes about with amongst women. It's really, it's really the ghetto to be honest with you. But anyway, on a more serious note, though seriously... Yeah, when you see when you see this type of behavior, I just don't think I don't see what people really truly get out of gossip. I've never been somebody who's into gossip, really. Have I ever been into gossip? No, not as far as like sharing gossip. I do enjoy knowing what's going on. I'm very interested in what's going on with everybody. OK, but I don't really I'm not really like, oh, I have to go and tell so and so. Did you hear? Not like that. Um, yeah, a wicked scoundrel wants to dig up dirt on others only to spread slander and shred their reputation. Yeah, I don't know why people go around doing this. And I think, you, to be honest with you guys, I think we uh, we as human beings have this misled sense that we're, any of us are actually good people. Because I find it so interesting how people will go around judging somebody because of something that comes out like, oh, so-and-so was cheated on. That's why I actually get really annoyed when people say in my videos, like, you're, you're judging so-and-so. I'm like, I'm literally not judging anybody. I'm commenting to, I, I, what I do on my channel, guys, when I talk about people as well, let me clarify this here. I'm not judging people. I'm actually talking about situations that happened so that we can all learn and gain wisdom to go forward. 
we've the bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of god i'm not better than anybody i'm not better than you guys uh, no you guys aren't better than me we're all the same we're all the same okay so just want to put that out there let's talk about this part now a vicious criminal can be persuasive enticing this is verse 29 enticing others to join him as partners in crime but he leads them all down a despicable path it's easy to tell when a wicked man is hatching some crooked scheme it's all it's written all over his face his looks betray him as he gives birth to sin oh my gosh and that takes me back to the verse your boast um the one that we just 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 read which i'm going to keep reading that that might have to be the, the caption of this video uh where is it we just read you where are you your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure yeah that's smirk we all know the smirk that the bible's talking about here right uh where are we verse 31 old age with wisdom will crown you with dignity and honor for it takes a lifetime of righteousness to acquire it exactly and that's why guys i look forward to being a grandma that's like the season of life i look forward to the most because i'm going to have my kid especially when i'm my, I'm, my children are like adults and i can't wait to be at that level of like wisdom where like they come to me with their like adult problems and i can help them and i can help them to skip out on so many of the things that i'm i've had to deal with i'm dealing with now and have, i will deal with and whatever I can't wait for that season of my life and just to just be enjoying, you know, being a grandma, being a mom. You know what I mean? I can't wait for that. That is literally, and I can't, I, I, that's, that's what I look forward to. And by that point, me and my husband will really know each other. We'll be like probably absolutely obnoxiously, like nauseatingly in love. That's what I'm looking for. Anyway, uh, where are we? Oh, but 32. Do you want to be a mighty warrior? It's better to be known as one who is patient and slow to anger. Do you want to conquer a city? rule over your temper before you attempt to rule a city we may toss the coin and roll the dice but god's will is greater than luck oh i love it i love the bible i love the bible this is interesting how the bible keeps talking specifically about anger in this in this this book of wisdom that we are dealing with here and i find that super duper interesting because i think it's it's one of those it's one of those things that can be used like i said to to knock you what's the phrase about knocking somebody off of their pedestal oh knocking you off your pedestal one of the easiest ways to knock you off your pedestal and it's also one of the greatest fuels for destruction and so i think a lot of people what what i think people underestimate let me let's put it like this what a lot of people underestimate is that as you become more successful as you have more money as you have more power as you have more fame your decisions have a much bigger group of people that they're going to affect and so you cannot have the, the, the little temp, the, what do they call that? You cannot have the quick temper you might have had when you were broke, right? Because when you were broke and you had a quick temper and you, you did whatever, you, you reacted however you reacted, that was one thing. When you're the CEO of a company, right? And this is, and I'll tell you guys an example of something that I heard that made me think really deeply. And it was something that a famous artist said. I can't remember which artist it was. It was like a rapper. No, was it a rapper? No, I don't know. They were a famous artist anyway, and they were a man. And I remember him saying that it's normal that these artists will be approached by random people trying to provoke them to anger, like in public, because they know that it will become a huge scandal if the, these, these artists beat up these people that are trying to provoke them in public. Does that make sense? And so the reason why I'm mentioning this in particular is because I know a lot of people, <laughs> unfortunately, I hate to say it, but a lot of men who would instantly retaliate in anger if if provoked that's exactly what the kingdom of darkness wants and that's exactly what the kingdom of darkness will attempt the higher you get guys the higher you get the more resistance new levels new devils is a very real phrase guys it's a very real phrase and that's why i often say that as much as i, I criticize the entertainment industry as in the industry itself the mechanism for what it is the system the gatekeepers the, the leaders the executives those are the people i criticize the artists themselves a lot of them I really feel for quite a lot and this is one area where I especially respect their ability to control things like their temper to control the things that they say because those things can have absolutely totally and utterly catastrophic results if not done well and one thing I want to just point out as we finish now because that was the end is what God said at the end we may toss the coin and roll the dice but God's will is greater than luck and what that says to me is that we can wait to see what happens when it happens. We can wait and see if I lose my temper today or 
it, it you you can leave it up to this the the, the luck or so-called of the world right to see what happens or we can just cling to the lord and his will and he can remove these pitfalls for, for for us because i do think like i said guys your life can change in an instant you can make a decision in one second you can do something in one exact second that will completely change the entire trajectory of your whole life and there's nothing you can do after that is done everything we have done guys after it's done there's nothing we can do now there is nothing, even if you apologize, even if you set, sit out your sentence, you still did whatever you did. And so let's be preventative. As the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that the Bible is the book of prevention and cures because I had a minister say it. Anyways, guys, I am not because I had a minister say it, a minister said it. And I was like, that's so true. That's so much more of a better way to think about it. Not a book of morals, not a book of rules, not a book of whatever people say. The book of preventions and cures. That's called wisdom. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe if you're feeling the vibe and you want to join the tribe. Check out my other videos. i got more videos coming out today. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And like the video because if life's a game, then let's play to win. God bless every single one of you guys watching this and I'll see you in my next one.